He is a passionate advocate for conservation. Roger put Defenders on the map of a strong activist uh, advocacy organization. He's so enthusiastic, so brilliant that you just want to be part of the organization. He has this financial background. He has a political background. Roger's always been tough but fair. And he's, he's willing to take on things that appear to others to be completely impossible. I remember when Defenders of Wildlife was over on the corner on 19th Street and it was barely operating out of shoeboxes. And Roger has built this organization into one of the most preeminent conservation organizations in the country. Roger came to Defenders in 1991. This was a time, a very difficult situation for Defenders, frankly, and for the environmental issues that we were working on. He came to us from work on Capitol Hill, so he brought with him not only a passion and interest in the issues, but tremendous political savvy. Roger knows more about the government and how it operates, the national government, than anybody I can think of that I know. 20 years ago, Defenders had barely 60,000 members. Now, we have close to a million members and supporters and the program work we've done has blossomed into a great variety of activities to further our wildlife conservation mission. Back in the early 90s, people forget that the environmental community was a community of various camps. You had the hook and bullet groups, you had the animal welfare groups, you had the pollution groups, and a lot of those groups didn't always interact very well together. And what Roger did with the science of biological diversity and embracing scientists like E.O. Wilson was attempt to marry these things. There's no one who has expressed that more clearly, more passionately, more forcefully than Roger Slickeisen. He's really been good at bringing the entire community together to focus on biological diversity as one of the most critical aspects of preserving our natural system. Roger had a t-shirt made up right after he arrived here at Defenders, and it was something like, uh, people will protect biodiversity when it appears on the back of a t-shirt. And what did Roger go do? He made some t-shirts with the word biological diversity on the back. When I think of Roger, I also think of his vision, and I think specifically of the way in which he worked with the Turner Foundation in creating the Partnership Project. The Partnership Project has become the campaign arm for the green community. And that's how we started, is thinking about how do we create a, an organization that allows everybody in the environmental community to be part of common campaign plans, to be part of common communication strategies. And he set that in motion in a way that uh, I think is quite remarkable. The Partnership Project would not exist without Roger Schlickeisen. Under Roger's leadership, we moved from having outside counsel uh, do most of the uh, litigation that Defenders was engaged in to having a very strong legal department within the organization. He wanted to have a legal department that had the flexibility and the strength to bring our own cases and to utilize the best legal talent both within the organization and outside the organization. It also meant that Defenders can be very strategic with its litigation in a way that maximizes progress on uh, protecting species. Roger's campaign to protect the Endangered Species Act is a legend in the Congress of the United States. He was fully prepared to engage on the, uh, on the merits. He was fully prepared to engage in a full-blown defensive campaign, and he was successful all the time. When the then chair of the uh, Natural Resources Committee, Richard Pombo, uh, wanted to uh, essentially repeal the act, uh, Roger fought him toe-to-toe -to -toe and fought him to a standstill in the Congress. It was really quite a remarkable effort. Roger was really in the forefront of Defender's effort to reintroduce wolves into the Northern Rockies. 
Roger is very determined, and when he's working on an issue that he feels deeply, he will go and go and go until he gets the results he wants. It was Roger's vision from the start, and I still remember the picture of Roger and I guess it was Secretary Babbitt opening the door and the wolves just charging out of their cages and off into the snow. Defenders has always been respected for the research it brings to Capitol Hill and the lobbying prowess it brings to Capitol Hill. The missing piece was strength at the ballot box. And so Roger formed the Action Fund to endorse candidates, to get out the vote for particular uh, pieces of legislation and particular individuals. Too many decisions are made in Washington that affect everybody in the rest of the country. And if you don't have a voice, if you're not sitting at the table, then you're pretty much the meal. I don't think there will be anyone in the conservation community who will not uh, remember the leadership he provided in the Richard Pombo political race in California. Pombo had been a leading opponent of the Endangered Species Act. He supported drilling in the Arctic Wildlife Refuge. And Roger, with his uh, political action committee, uh, decided that defenders should remove him from office. And the rest of us thought he was stark raving mad. There was no possible way that he could take Richard Pombo out of office. And you, you cannot overestimate, when you scroll back time to 2005 and early 2006, Nobody believed you could defeat Richard Pombo. Nobody. Well, if Roger has one quality, it's determination. And this is something that came to him. He thought about it. He researched it, thought it was a good idea, and pushed and pushed and pushed. It's high risk, high reward time. If we don't win, then we're just going to continue to have losses for years and years to come. We launched a real political campaign against Pombo and his dependence on the oil companies. We had a little Pombo in your pocket thing <laughs> using the pocket of the oil companies. A watchdog group named him one of the 13 most corrupt members of Congress, a scheme to sell our national parks, and 14 billion in tax breaks for big oil. We really capitalized on absolutely everything we could, and we were the only group there doing it. Richard Pombo, under the influence of big developers, Pombo's pushing to gut protections for America's wildlife to benefit developers. He even proposed selling off 15 national parks, a scheme the Sacramento Bee called dim and slimy. Learn more at pombointheirpocket.org and tell Richard Pombo, America's heritage is not for sale. As it turned out, uh, we got him. <laughs> Roger did it. Had he not taken that first move, there had been no political message sent in 2006 that you better not mess with the Endangered Species Act or our community. It had powerful repercussions, and he did it. You couldn't scoff at the environmental community anymore, that, that you better watch out. You know, this was, a, this, this was a rattlesnake that could bite real hard. The brutal world of Washington uh, is that you have to be able to stand up to all the money and power of the other side. And Roger was a great ass kicker, and uh, has always been a great one. He's a kick-ass kind of guy. What I always admired most about Roger is his ability to have some foresight as to where the organization was going or should be going and how to get there. He's very pragmatic. He's a realist. He's a risk taker. He's very, very clear about what he wants to do and he's passionate about getting that done. And he motivates other groups to really follow in his footsteps. Roger's very bold, and he's very strategic in his thinking, and really sees what needs to happen to make transformational changes. 
Roger was unique in some ways in, in the national leadership, calling the truth as he saw it for conservation no matter who was in power. He took an organization in deep trouble and made it the major force in wildlife conservation. It's the strongest, it has the clearest vision, and it is able to not only set goals, but accomplish them. And Roger has shown that when you lay out a high goal and you work towards that goal, anything is within reach. Uh, defeating Richard Pombo is within reach, uh, defending the Endangered Species Act is within reach, uh, introducing wolves into the Yellowstone ecosystem, all within reach if you put your mind to it. Roger's gonna have a great conservation legacy. Combination of vision, passion, political smarts, and the effectiveness in actually bringing people together around common cause. This is not an end for Roger. Roger has a lot more left in him. And there's going to be some opportunities out there that are just gonna help him to shine even brighter.